Hi, it's Polly here. Mm-hmm. Mm. Sherry. Um, yeah, I found a little piece of just genius. I've had it for a few years and I love it. Labyrinths and Lycanthropes. This is gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. This is a game that's driven by ordinary decks of playing cards. Now, it's a dungeoneering game. It's very clearly British written. But it's where a group of players can play. You can actually do this one um, solo if you really like. But you create a adventuring world, you create labyrinths, you create characters, and as a group, you go on these mighty quests. What you're doing is you are rotating. One person is the labyrinth lord for a section of the adventure. When that section finishes, it rotates. The next person to the left becomes the Labyrinth Lord. The previous Labyrinth Lord's character comes in and joins in. But they have actually been getting things, you know, as it goes on. Now, there is kind of a winner to this. Uh, there are victory conditions which you can set. It can be the first one to reach 10th level. It can be the first one. It can be whoever strikes the final mortal blow on the ultimate enemy that you're all tracking down. And the reason that person wins is because in the tales that are told, that person becomes the hero that slew the Dark Mage, and everyone else will be told of as his trusty sidekicks and companions. So, you know, oh! <clears throat> So, kind of bolstering your own legend is important in this. But, you've got different, essentially, classes. So you've got, sort of, um, Fighter's Rogue, Wizard, and there are set skills which come under the blankets of each of those characters. Uh, hack and Slash is a fighting skill. Um, sneaking is a, um, a roguey skill. And um, Blasting Things is a um, magician skill. There are a couple of others like Lore and these sorts of things. But you start off, your character is third level. You can start at lower if you wish. But they suggest third level for a first game. You split levels between those um, classes. You then pick some um, skills and you pick gear. Now gear essentially gives you a bonus in a skill. So if you want a defensive piece of armor like uh, armor or helmet or whatever, that adds to your parry. If you want a um, special sword or whatever, that adds to your hack and slash. Or I've got a wand that adds to my blast. Or I've got a scroll or a, a magic ring. You invent these things. Now, the fun part about this is that you invent this whole game together. So, what you have to do as you make a character is, you have to have your reason for adventuring. Um, if you come up with a stupid reason for, or you can have a stupid reason for adventuring, but if you come up with a lame one, you actually lose out. Um, because you don't get sort of bonuses for following your story. So, in their examples, this guy decides to make a guy, he's mostly hack and slash, but uh, gear, right, I'll take I'll take a helmet fashioned from, um, from a magical lobster. And uh, he decides the reason he's out adventuring is vengeance. He picks from the vengeance thing and he says, right, I want vengeance against uh, Lokor, the evil uh, lobster lord that destroyed my village. So this guy's got kind of a um, beat up the crustacean theme thing. Um, when you encounter nemeses and when you do things that, you know, work towards your aims and goals, you get little kind of bonus story points. Now, you create a world together. So you take a piece of paper and whee, you just kind of draw borders on it freehand. Um, it could be an island or these could be the um, borders of the kingdom or some of it could be seas, some of it could be rivers, whatever. And then you put your home wherever you've met in the tavern. It goes somewhere kind of sort of maybe around the middle or whatever, bonk, give it a name. And then each player cooks up a place on the map. Um, and they've got some beautiful little examples of people like um, just cooking up ridiculous names. You know, this is, <laughs> this, this, this is the, what they got there? They got, um, this is, this is the, the, the swamp of pointless adventures. Uh, this is the labyrinth of ludicrousness. Um, <laughs> <laughs> this is the dark spire of questionable meaning. And um, good. Those are all potential adventure places, potential labyrinths. You then um, decide which is going to be the first labyrinth that you visit. Your labyrinth lord then kind of sits in. And they've got this lovely system for dealing out these cards. The, the labyrinth is made by playing these cards face down. Um, first one is the gate. And then a player puts a card that joins in um, horizontally or vertically to another card that's been placed. So each of you places face down cards and so you make a labyrinth. The 
Um, Labyrinth Lord, meanwhile, has got um, some special cards which represent the uh, the boss of the current labyrinth and you can have some um, big bads big bad monsters but you could also have jokers which are just blinds so because anything with an extra card on it is an umpire special it mm, it might be the guy you're looking for but it could just be a joker um, so it's it's a red herring everyone sits down and they invent some monsters you dish out some random cards and the card that's on it it gives you what type of level and monster so if you get a five you've got to do a fifth level monster and um, the suit tells you what general sort of monster is it going to be a magical monster is it going to be this or that you design it and no matter how bad your art skill is you draw a picture of it so um, all right uh, it's going to be oh it's going to be the um, dread balloons of Zoxnax the dread balloons of Zoxnax uh, right they have a um, uh, a big long string which they can whip you with whoosh, and um, ah but if you kill one it explodes doing this much damage you've got a little list of powers and skills that you can pick from to do this kind of thing uh, the labyrinth lord takes a look if he thinks what you've done is kind of a bit lame or if he thinks the skills and powers you've chosen are a bit uh, don't quite work he can change one of them um, and then this is locked in everyone makes um, a couple of monsters and then the Labyrinth Lord makes a couple and the Labyrinth Lord um, does a couple of big bads and those of you who've got like a um, I must find my evil nemesis they have as part of the character creation they have nominated what that um, nemesis is so those guys go off and these are going to be bosses of different labyrinths and so on so you adventure forward the cards turn over the cards can be um, each of them can be um, depending on the suit and the number the number is the threat level and the suit tells you what it is it could be guards it could be traps it could be conundrums it could be treasures um, some of these areas uh, can actually be safe to rest in but you feel your way forward and as you encounter monsters you fight the fighting system is done with cards again the levels you've got in a thing and the skills and suitable gear are a number of cards that you draw so if I have two levels of fighter and I've got one skill in hack and slash and I've got my mighty sword of um, my, 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 the, the mighty sword of throbbing gristle um, which adds plus one to my hack and slash good two levels one skill one sword I draw four cards the monsters and so on they have a set number of cards they draw depending on um, the number do, 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 do. Uh, you check the highest cards and whoever had the highest card wins however if um, they're tied you then check the next highest cards and so on down the difference between the cards is the amount of damage that you take um, if you've got um, parry and so on and skills and armor that can um, ping, you can um, try and block some of the damage the damage then comes off your levels um, if the levels get to zero you are unconscious you can however break gear instead of losing a level so oh no it broke my mighty, lo my lo mighty lobster helmet is gone Bing. Um, when a player is KO'd they're out of the current fight if everyone gets KO'd ah, they are dragged off by the uh, the evil boss of the dungeon places them in, in his um, um, evil prison they get a chance to try and stage a breakout if they fail the Labyrinth Lord's character does come and save them all, but he gets bragging rights over everyone. <laughs> so the Labyrinth Lord character gets stuck. When you're about to go off into a dungeon, all of the uh, players, they also nominate um, a ridiculous dungeon cliche that they would like to see. As the Labyrinth Lord is playing, whenever the Labyrinth Lord brings in a ridiculous, one of these ridiculous cliches in a meaningful way, they actually get some extra um, points that they can either use to throw into the monsters and so on as they fight or um, they can actually reserve those and keep some of those for their character when it's their character's turn to play the players if they do stuff that makes people laugh if they play their um, backgrounds if they do ridiculous actions uh, if they play up you get some um, traits and so on if you play up your traits in a way that actually gets you into trouble you also get some bonus um, points these um, little fake points and you can use these as extra cards when you're playing 
Um, you keep track of um, the monsters and so on when you get, um, I think it's three times the level of monster, you know, times your own level. I think, bing, you can trash those in and you can go up in a level or you can get extra skills. Um, this is a really neat, hilarious little game. Uh, there's some little notes in there for playing solo and so on. But you just troll about and you make this hysterical dungeon. But the whole idea is to make it as funny as possible. The way they've kind of pushed it in this, their examples and the names they've given characters, the ridiculous monsters, shows a level of kind of fun absurdity. Um, I know they're British because their rogue character has the name Lovejoy. If you've never seen the TV series Lovejoy, if you like playing rogues, find it. It's probably on YouTube. Um, yeah, there's a lovely piece of work. It's a great thing for an evening, for a laugh, for a break from play. You can see it's not um, that huge, but again, it's a nice compact size. This is one that I take to conventions. If you've got people sitting around and no one knows what to do, whatever, you can just whip this out and like, hey, well, all right, deck of cards, off we go. So it's, it's portable, quick play, but absolutely hysterical. This is actually a beautiful piece of games design work. The actual system is so clever, but that way of getting everyone in and everyone's bought into the world. You've made this ridiculous place, you've made these ridiculous labyrinth names, and you've created the themes and these ludicrous monsters and the big bads and their minions, and um, you've made it together as like a shared adventure world. And I think some of the monsters that you'll make, you'll probably keep for, you know, your more serious campaigns because these are just so damn funny. Labyrinths and Lycanthropes. Uh, a little hidden gem of genius that's been lurking around on drive through for a while. Uh, go and find it. You absolutely won't regret it. Anyway, cheers. Uh, take a look at the game. If you like the videos, yay! Like, subscribe. <laughs> find me on Patreon. Cheers.